Hello, my dear. Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator, voice for your loved ones. How are you today? You know the routine. You know you've done this before. So I just always remind people um, if, if he says something and it doesn't make any sense now, just keep it in mind. You'll either remember it later, see it later, or somebody else will validate it for you later. They never waste a message. They never waste their energy. There's always a reason for whatever they show or say, even if you don't understand it at the moment. Blech. I'm babbling already. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk to your dad today. I, uh, Ooh, have you done something really good recently? Because he's he's saying, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. Like you recently. It could be something little. It doesn't have to be something huge. I'm so proud of you. Keep up the good work. Well, this isn't exactly what he's talking about, but he's also saying... You are working on yourself, your inner self. The other thing felt like more of an, an accomplishment, like something you did. Well, it's not like you're not doing anything when you work on yourself, but <laughs> that's harder than any work. He said, I'm very, very over the top proud of you for both. You're working on yourself to let go of some of the shit in your life. And he's, he's talking more about not shit as a person around you or anything like that, but you're working on to get rid of the stuff you've been hanging on to, the stuff that, say it again. There are things that you're trying to let go of. And I don't mean like let go of a rope you're holding on to or something. There's things like from your past, things like that. He's not being real specific that you're trying to let go of. Okay, he's wanting me to tell you, think of it as a learning lesson. So... Like a few, just here a few years ago when I started doing some healing work on myself and uh, we found out that I was still holding on to things when I was five years old. And I said, no, no, I got rid of all that shit. I don't worry about it anymore. No, found out all I had done was stuff it. It's still there, but I stuffed it. And it's still there, but I'm still working on it. So it's... Things like that that you just need to let go of and put over to the side and go, okay, it happened. What did I learn from it? And that little girl wasn't such a bad little girl. It's just all the things that happened to her. So think of it almost like, almost like it's another person. Like, okay, so if you saw you right now as a little girl, but her name was Sally. Let's just call her Sally. Oh, you really want me to explain this? And she did things when she was little that maybe she shouldn't have. Or people did things to her when she was little that they shouldn't have. What would you say to this other little girl? You don't say that to yourself. You say shit to yourself. I think we all beat ourselves up worse than anybody else can. So how... How kind and loving would you be to that little girl who went through hell when they were younger? How kind and loving and what nice words would you say to her? You need to put yourself in that place and say them to yourself. Is that right? He says that's good enough. Say those things to yourself. You know, like if we have a best friend and we go and put our arm around her and Let's say she smacks somebody. Let's say your best friend smacks somebody. You go, oh, it's okay. I still love you. Say that to yourself. Love yourself even more than you, and with more compassion than you have for your friend 
who you have tons of compa- compassion for and forgive them for everything. You got to forgive yourself. They're just boo-boos. They're just hiccups. Whatever's happened in your life, they're just hiccups. They're, well, like I tell people, my path, it goes like this. It's got all these, I call them this, the scenic route. There's all these detours that I took, but I learned something on every whoop de doo every mistake, every fuck up that I did, I learned something or maybe even learned what not to do again or what, who not to be around or who not to let talk to me like that. Oh, he's, he's like jumping up. He goes, that's a big one for her. It's how one of them is how you're allowing people to talk to you. And when I say allowing, I want to put that huge capital letters. We allow people to do that to us. And it was just a month or two ago when I told somebody who's, he's been mean to me forever. We were all friends. I said, I'll never allow you to treat me like that again. You know, you're supposed to have been a friend. I will not allow you to talk to me like that. He said, again, your dad says that's a big one for you. You do not have to allow them, he says. See, he's referring me to this circumstance with my ex-friend. People go, oh, well, he's just like that. That's just the way he is. Well, I don't care. I don't have to allow him to be that way to me. I don't have to allow him to say those things to me. I don't have to allow him to lean across the table, look at me, and goes, I hope you die. I don't have to allow that. No, and neither do you. Dad's being kind of, you know, we're kind of came out forcefully from me right there. That's the way he's being about it. He says, don't allow those people to squish you. He says, doesn't matter if it's mother, father, of course we know he's gone, Um, boss, friend, He says, you're allowing them to do things, do and say things like that to you that make you feel a certain way that squish it, makes you feel squished down and you're putting it inside and hanging on to it. And you're taking it like it's yours. It's not yours. It's theirs. Don't allow it. There's a lot of crap we put up in this world that we allow to happen. Uh-oh, I got all kinds of things popping up in my head about me. <laughs> Uh-oh, I better shut up. <laughs> it's just something that we end up having to heal from later because it ends up working and wearing on. He says wearing, wearing, it's wearing, wearing. Even if it's something that's so deep down inside you're not even realizing it right now, it's there. So whether it's something that's bubbling up and it's going to come out, and it could be, I have no idea how old you are. You know, like mine came back from when I was five years old. Look how old I am. So it could be something when they bubble, those things bubble up like that. They come up to be released. They come up to be cleansed. They don't come up so you can squish them back down and go, oh. Because I always, I always said, well, I kicked its ass back then. I'm okay. No, I didn't. He says you're not. So when they start bubbling up or you start having a dream or a memory or something and it hurt, it's a hurtful thing, let it out. Don't keep holding on to it. Let it come out. Even if you have to go in the bathroom and scream. Oh, he, he's applauding me. He thinks I explained it the way he wanted it explained. Now tell her I love her. Tell her I'm just hanging around. Okay, he's got like a tree branch, like a little twi- a twig, or like a twig, and he's snapping it, and he's snapping it. And it sounds very crisp. You know, not like a green, soggy one that you can't break. This one's snapping. So listen for that snap. You don't have to be outside. You can 
sit in your chair watching TV or at work or in your car. It doesn't matter. Or you might even see somebody on TV or YouTube or something. Take a twig and go snap and go, that's still a sign from him. Validate him, acknowledge him, tell him you love him and ask him to bring you more if you want more. No, I need to Google this song, see what he's trying to sing. Hang on, he's working on the song. Okay, I don't know why he's singing the song, Roll Me Over in the Clover, Do It Again. Because he's not talking about sex between the two of you. So that one makes me a little squeamish that he sing, but he's singing that one just, just. Of course, I don't know how, how old your dad would be now. That was a song that I sang grade school, junior high. Everybody used to always sing that song. I guess we thought we were cute. Bad words. Well, not really bad words, but it was a naughty song. But he's got a big smile and he's giggling. Maybe he used to sing that song or whistle that song. Uh, go see if you can find it on YouTube or E-L-E-X-A. Okay, not sure why he's doing this either, but it's like, it's like he's showing you like, and I don't think you're physically doing this, but you're, like you're leaning your head, your ear towards the window, like anxiously awaiting for spring, but it's like, it's getting closer. Oh, I live in Kansas. I don't, I'm not sure where you live, but of course spring's getting ready to come, but it's like. Just, you could almost hear spring, but you can't quite get there. Not sure why he's referring to that. Maybe you're really yearning for spring. I know I am. Can't wait to go camping, get outside, breathe. Okay, so he's showing me a pie. And uh, it's got homemade crust on it. It's absolutely homemade. And it's got a big wedge out of it. Yeah, lighter colored fruit doesn't have to be that it's apple or peach, but that's the color of the fruit that's in it. Though I think he's trying to validate that it's him. So recently you had some, you were getting you made some, um, bought some, getting, wanting to buy some. I don't know exactly what it is. He's not saying, I think he's just trying to validate. Okay, so now he's... He's showing me like a pair of tennis shoes. They're yours on your feet. Pretty sure they're yours. And one shoe string is untied. I get the feeling that it keeps coming untied. Or keeps coming untied. So recently, I don't know if you have a pair of shoes that you have. I think he's, again, he's trying to validate it, that it's him. It's just like there's one end of it just hanging out. So I don't know if you recently tripped over your own shoe strings or if you have a pair of shoes that this keeps happening to. Or if it happens in the real near future. You'll know that he knows about it. I love you. Life is really grand up here. It's full of love, peace, quiet most of the time. Oops, dang. got to shut my thing off. He says, um, I'm pretty laid back. He says, I'm as close as the wind blowing when you're outside in the grass that's stupid thing and the grass that's blowing in the breeze. I'm that close. Just trust it. And he says, trust that I will surround you with love if you allow it. With that, he's leaving. Okay, much love to you, my dear. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be his voice. I think, again, Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator, 
voices for your loved ones. Later.